Morning with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, mahaba, morning mole wanji, namaste, jambo, bienvenidos, hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from our southern studios in the beautiful city of Orlando, in the great state of Florida. We are so happy and so excited that you would join us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to tell all of your family and friends about the show. Tell your kids, teachers, their librarians, their principals. And please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Stitcher Radio, Ghana, Himalaya, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Molly Idol. She is here to celebrate her beautiful picture book. It's called Witch Hazel. Before we invite our guests into the studio, we want to invite you to join us at the Orange County Children's Book Festival in Costa Mesa, California on October 2nd. The Orange County Children's Book Festival is the largest children's book festival in North America. It's incredible. There are hundreds of authors, all sorts of totally interactive shows. We'll be there with our booth. You get to meet me. You get to meet some of the books that we've celebrated here on the podcast. You get to be part of our totally interactive family magic show. And we're going to be looking for some great families to interview to be part of a future episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Cut past bed, bed. Easier said than done. Reading With Your Kids podcast. It's, it's fun. It's easy. It's free. Free admission. October 2nd. Uh, the Orange County Children's Book Festival. Come on down. Join us right now from Phoenix in the state of Arizona. Our guest today is here to celebrate her beautiful picture book. It's called Witch Hazel. Please welcome to the show Molly Idol. Hey, Molly, how are you? I'm well. Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm delighted to have you here today. And I have to tell you, I'm going to tell you in a little bit. Molly really made me look like a hero before she even met me. And I'm going to tell her how that happened in a little bit. But first, could you tell us all all about Witch Hazel? Oh, I can. I can. So um, Witch Hazel uh, is a picture book all about a little wizened old witch named Hazel who shares stories of her life with her granddaughter, Hilda, by conjuring memories made from the dust that she sweeps with her magical broom. Sounds really neat. (laughs) I think so. Yeah, yeah. Now, where did the inspiration for the story come from? Well, I'll tell you. So, um, Witch Hazel and her granddaughter Hilda are, are loosely based on my grandmother, uh, who we all called Mana, and myself. And as my Mana grew older and her physical form grew more frail, I, I noticed that there was a, a growing divide between how people perceived her and how she perceived herself. I mean, all most folks saw when they looked at her was this little woman that she was at 91. Like, that was all she was and all she ever had been. But, of course, in her mind, she was still the strong, independent woman she was in her 40s, the belle of the ball that she was at 17, and, you know, the the playful 8-year-old who hated being made to practice the piano but loved climbing the trees and exploring the woods that surrounded her house. All of those manas were still a part of her. And I could see them because she had shared all of her stories with me. And I wished that I could magically make all those versions of her visible to everyone else. That they could see not just her final chapter, but all the parts of her story. And that's when I began to conjure Witch Hazel. You know... That one of the things that we have really advocated for here on the podcast is for families to share stories, to share stories about themselves. I, I am a big believer in parents knocking themselves off that pedestal our kids put us on, thinking that we're perfect beings, uh, letting our kids know that no, we're we're not perfect. We make mistakes. We don't know all the answers. And by the way, I made some really dopey mistakes when I was a kid. 
And I love sharing stories about people that my kids have never met. You know, my grandmother, my grandfather. My daughter could tell you stories about my grandmother as if she was one of my daughter's best friends, as, as my grandmother was one of my best friends. My daughter never had a chance to meet my grandmother. She passed before my daughter was born. But my daughter can tell people all about her. And uh, I, and that's the way my grandmother lives on. And, and I think it's so, so really, really important to do that. Oh, I could not possibly agree more, Jen. I could not possibly agree more. I mean, I have to start by telling you that my parents, both my mom and my dad, live with myself and my husband and our two children as a multi-generational family. And the the amazing stories and times that we have had, you know, when they hear stories that my dad tells, not only about, you know, he's in his 80s, so not only about his childhood, you know, in the 30s and 40s, but stories about his parents and his grandparents. You know, we're going back more than a 100 years, and it's broadened our children's perspectives and and opened their hearts in a way. And also, I think, um, and also, like you say, humanized people of all ages to them. I think it, it's so easy when uh, when you're young to just sort of be like, oh, everybody over, you know, over childhood age is just old and like, what do they know? But when when you hear these stories about when people were your age and you think, oh my gosh, that's very much like me, you know, like so many of the, the places or the technology may have changed, but the emotions are, are very much the same. They're universal. And I love hearing that your children are, are able to recall those stories because it's in those ways that our loved ones go on. That is the transcendent power that memory and story have to keep the ones that we love with us long after we can no longer be with them physically. Yeah. So, so, so very important. And I think, I think it's somewhat comforting to the, I, I haven't like kind of worked this out, but I think it's comforting to the kids when when they see us keeping those memories alive i think it kind of gives our kids hope that their memory is going they're going to live longer than the time that they're actually here on earth oh absolutely and i think too it's it's also wonderful to think of how like when you meet somebody who has decades of stories that they can tell you and and maybe you uh, don't even have quite a decade of life under your belt yet, right? That like, oh, this is just the beginning of my story. Like, if we're lucky, we all get to be this older person who has decades and decades of stories that they can share. And of course, some are sad and some are joyous. And there are so many that are a combination of both. And it's it's magical. It is. It is magical. And that's... One of the things that I thought when I first received my copies of Witch Hazel, I, I had a, an advanced reader copy, and then I had the, the the finished book, and it's beautiful. But the but the illustrations are very different. You 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 chose this is I'm, I'm not going to say this as eloquently as I want. There are some pages where, where you look and it's like, is this finished yeah because it's there's just a lot like you've you left a lot to our imagination was that was obviously intentional absolutely well because i think you know in part when we're remembering something we remember specific things very clearly but there's a lot of fuzz on the outside of those edges things that weren't keeping our full attention. Um, and so I liked the idea that the images focused almost entirely upon Hilda and Hazel. Mm -hmm. And for those of your readers that don't have a copy of the book in front of them, I can describe that every the entire book is only in three colors. It is in graphite, so like a, a grayish pencil color, and white, in some white pencil. And the they're, it's all drawn on brown paper. And so all of the characters and things that are appearing in the present 
and are happening now as we're reading the book are in graphite and all the memories are being conjured from dust, which is actually made of white pencil dust on the paper. And so those memories do, they come from just twinkling little bits of nothing and then take on form and then dissipate again. So they are very uh, ephemeral and sort of ethereal looking, but also their surroundings too, because I thought when you remember a conversation you had with a loved one or a story they tell you, you're remembering them, but maybe you don't remember what was on the coffee table behind them or necessarily what pictures were hanging on the wall. Those are sort of fuzzy on the outside edges. And, and so I wanted the book to have that quality of, of being remembered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm fascinated uh, because I'm I'm not an artist and a visual artist in any way. I create magic stories. I've, I perform as a magician at schools around the country, so I kind of understand that process of creativity and creating stories and taking a ma oh I can take this into this and change that. What kind of story can I tell with that? But the visual arts this is this is a, a style that I've never seen before that. That word you use, ephemeral, you, you see that kind of, of, of depicted in, in different ways. It's, you know, there's clouds and all that kind of stuff. But this is very, very unique, at least unique to, to me. Where did this come from? Wait, was this like right from the start you knew I'm, this is, this is how I'm going to do this? Or, you know, did you do like a kind of straight illustration first and come back? Or I, I'm just very curious. <laughs> well, this book is, it is a new technique for me. It is different than most of my, my other works. Look, I mean, hopefully you can, when people who have seen other of my books will go, oh, I can see that she did this too. But the, the medium is, is different working in the very, very limited color palette. It actually came about, um, as a result of, of a little bit of just letting the story lead me. I, I think, and I'm sure you've had other artists on the show express this as well, that you sort of have to let the story tell you a little bit what it needs in terms of how it should be portrayed. And, um, and while I had been playing around for a while with the idea of creating a, a witch character and having like her memories um, unfold magically, it wasn't until my own mana, my own grandmother, had passed away and that I was in her house helping sort of set things right, clean up, and just sort of put things back to the way that she would have liked them to be, um, and that I realized, you know, tidying, and this is going to sound so silly, but tidying has always been a real comfort to me, even since I was a child. Like if I, if things were out of place in the world, I could put them into place in my room or with my toys. And in that way, like have some sense of control over what was happening. And that gave me a feeling of greater um, control and connection with my emotions. And so tidying my grandmother's house gave me this feeling of, of, of peace and of, of sort of putting things in place. And, um, and I was struck by, um, you know, what a, what a simultaneously mundane and beautiful thing dust can be. I mean, so often we see it as, oh, I need to dust, right? But sometimes if you're sitting in the right light and dust is filtering and sunlight is coming through it, it takes on this like utterly, uh, pixie dust magic quality, right? And and so something that we think of as a negative can really be so beautiful. And it struck me that um that loss is like that as well. That the that the feelings that we have of sorrow are are almost entirely directly proportional to the love that we had for that person that we've lost. Um so I, I knew in that moment that dust was somehow going to be key to the way in which I wanted to tell the story. And of course, dust is mostly, you know, sort of white, light colored. And most of my picture books are very vibrantly colored. But I knew that if I created a book in full color, that would diminish the, the visual impact of this dust that I wanted to be featured. And so then I knew, all right, so it has to just be black and white. Um, but black and white felt sort of cold and, and a little, you know, not as friendly as I would like it to feel. And then I found this beautiful brown paper that's almost exactly, if you're, if you're listening, so that we could describe it for you, it's almost exactly the color of 
like paper grocery bags or nice. paper lunch bags, like the sort of things I would draw on as a child. And that made it feel, it made it feel like home to me. So that is how this, this mix of colors and mediums came about. Wow. I, I, I just have to ask, uh, any pushback from the publishers, uh, when, you know, you went to sell this manuscript, were they sitting there scratching their head going, uh, yeah, okay, Molly, this is like kind of cute, but it's, <laughs> we can't sell this. Do you know, I am so lucky to have my editor, Andrea Spooner at Little Brown, who just believes like, so wholeheartedly in, in my work. And, and I think that when she read the story and I told her that I, I wanted to illustrate it in a limited color palette, um, she said, Maybe you could add one color. <laughs> I said, let's see. <laughs> and, then, um, and then I created just a sample piece. And and when they saw it, they said, no, you're right. Just like that. And uh, I'm so grateful because it is, it is very different. And it's, you know, it's maybe not as, you know, as rainbows and sparkles and things like that. But I think... I think it's really, it, it's important that the art suit the story. And I also think it's wonderful to introduce children to all kinds of art, that there's all sorts of art that can be beautiful, photography and dance. And, and in fact, throughout each of the seasons that's featured in the book, as we go through this year with Hilda and Hazel, I tried to make every season revolve around a different art form. The first is about in springtime, we have storytelling. And then in summer, there's music. And then in the fall, there's dance. And then there's crochet. And there's, you know, cooking. And then we come back around. But I, I love the idea that there are so many ways to express ourselves. And the more of those ways we, we can share with our young readers, uh, the bigger their world becomes. Yeah. Well, I, I, I teased early on that you kind of made me a hero this past weekend and i'm interested to know how Jen. Yes, well, I, well i you know we we live in this beauty you know i, I introduced the show and let everybody know that we're coming from reedville and reedville is a real place it's a neighborhood in the city of boston very historic um it was the home of the massachusetts 54th regiment the first all-black regiment that fought in the civil war and they trained their parade ground was literally two blocks away from my home and now of course there's no longer an army training base but it's a beautiful family neighborhood and the the in the past few years the neighborhood has kind of transitioned the kids my kids who are now 26 and 29 and their friends have all grown up and a lot of those families have have moved on so suddenly over the past three or four or five years we have new life in the neighborhood, and there are new five-year-olds and seven-year-olds, and we are becoming uh, part of all of those families. As they see me and my beautiful wife walk our not very friendly dog around in the mornings, you know, they come up and they say hi, and our next-door neighbor, um, little Cora, was celebrating her eighth birthday over the weekend and she loves to read and I'm always sharing the books that I, I receive with her. And as we're going out, I'm looking at the stack of books and goes, well, maybe she might like this. She might. And then I remembered that you or, or your publisher had sent me a print from, from Witch Hazel and it was signed and numbered. And I said, what a gift for Cora her a, a book, the whole the whole story plus this print, and she saw it, and her eyes just lit up. Just, I mean, and because because I think it that the thing we talked about earlier on that there is a lot that the that the reader is going to be filling in that you you kind of like hey here's my story and i'm going to tell you part of it but you need to fill in the rest of it and i think core just looking at that print and looking at the cover art she got that right away and <laughs> as we say here in boston she was like so wicked excited it was <laughs> it was great and she loved it and um so i i have to thank you and it would have had a beautiful place in my office here, but it is going to be so much more appreciated in Cora's bedroom. Oh, that story makes me so happy. <laughs> 
that's brilliant. Yeah, that there's no better place for books than in the hands of young people. <laughs> Absolutely. And and this young person is uh, just delightful. She is bright and she's imaginative and she's sweet and she's kind and she's friendly and um, yeah, I think and and. And this is a kid who is going to love hearing stories about her relatives, and she is going to be telling stories to her kids going on. Oh, that is wonderful! I I do I hope that I hope that reading the book sparks conversations with with her family about well, what are some of our stories? You know, that's the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, what's next? for Witch Hazel. Are we going, is this going to become a series or is this like, no, this is just too sweet, one and done? <laughs> you know, I think, I think for, for our Hazel, it will, this is a wonderful place to end her story. I did, I, somebody else, I, I, I know, I think I read it in a review somewhere. Somebody said, well, what happens next? And I thought, gosh, if I could tell you what happens next to Hazel, that would be a whole different book. <laughs> But, but I love the idea that our stories go on and on. So maybe Hazel's story ends with Hilda or goes on with Hilda as actually what I should be saying, because Hilda goes on mm -hmm. and on. And, and the very end of the book, as you, if you, if you're a reader who is, uh, is interested in investigating every nook and cranny of a book. If you lift up the back flap of the jacket, there's a tiny hint at the magic that Hilda is able to start creating now, um, where she's, you see her now conjuring her own memories of herself. And so that is what I hope if, if there's not another book and I don't plan for there to be another Hazel book specifically, but, um, if it goes on in any way, I hope it's just that children realize that this is a magic that they can conjure themselves, yeah. that memory and story, those are real magic, if there is such a thing. Yeah. Yeah. This thought just came into my mind, and I have to apologize because I have this – people who listen to this show know I have this weird brain, and it just – things flash and for no reason. It might have been an injury I suffered many, many decades ago. But I, you were talking earlier about, you know, uh, the, the, the grief that we feel is, you know, equal to the love that we feel for somebody. And I know a lot of kids who suffer the loss of somebody they love, especially at a young age, can be kind of gun shy. It's like, I don't know if I want to love again. I don't want to go through this again. But I think that Witch Hazel would be a way to comfort them, would be a way to kind of talk to kids about, yeah, this is this is one of you had that relationship and that love, and now it's gone, and that hurts. But that's, that's a hurt that's okay because it meant that you loved somebody so much. And... And uh, and you can do it again. You can open yourself up and, and do it again and let yourself love somebody else just as hard. Oh, absolutely. And I and I think that um, upon repeat readings of, of the book, if somebody's inclined to when they finish it, read it again, um, the book plays with the ideas of, of letting things go and and the sort of chapters that we have in our lives throughout the sort of seasons that there are in the stories. Hazel has a series of familiars that she remembers, right? There's a cat that she had when she was a little girl around Hilda's age. And there's a bird that, um, a songbird that she loves, um, but lets go in her teen years. And then when she's the belle of the ball, she has this, um, boa constrictor that she wears like a feather boa. Um, but none of those animals are with her in the present. And, you know, so it's, you know, you have to realize that she's also experienced loss, right? Because none of these things that she has loved, none of these creatures that she has loved are still with her. And it's this cyclical nature, right? So there's, you know, the story takes place over a year. And a year when you're young, oh my gosh, a whole year? That's an eternity, right? <laughs> if you're a kitten, 
a whole year takes you from being this tiny ball of fluff to a full grown cat um, to an adult. Oh my gosh, a year goes by in the blink of an eye. Right? So this idea of, of making every moment count and making the most of every moment with everybody that you're with is, is another thing that, that I, I believe is so important. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, you know, one, you mentioned multiple readings, readings and uh, I, I, I've often heard parents say, oh, my kid wants me to read that book again. <laughs> But one of the things I, 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 I say to parents is, yeah, you have kids. That's a, that's a compliment, number one. They like the way you read. So, like, mm-hmm. big ups to you. But more <laughs> importantly, you don't have to read a book in the same way. And <gasps> oh, one of the no. things that we encourage families to do is to take a picture walk through a book before you read it. Just You might want to take a post-it note and cover the words and just go through and just talk. And which Hazel is the perfect book for a picture walk because there are so many different interpretations. Uh, I think a family of three, a mom reading with her two kids or dad reading with two or three kids, everybody's going to have a different thought about what's going on in the illustrations, I think. Oh, absolutely. And I think the story will, you know, people, of course, bring their own experiences to every book that they read. And so somebody who has experienced loss already is going to have a different takeaway from this book than maybe somebody who has not yet experienced um, a loss in that way. Um, but of course, the joy of sharing stories. I, I was talking with somebody the other day who paid me I, just the highest of compliments. They said, you know, you this story is in some ways, you know, really pulls at your heartstrings, but you can also read the book through and not feel sad at all because all of the memories and, and the joy that Hilda and Hazel have spending their time together, you know, I don't want people to come away and think like, oh, that's going to be like a hard, mm-hmm. hard book to read and, and a hard book to get through. But I do think that different people will take different things away from the book. And and that that is one of the great joys of making a book is that then when you share that story, It's going to take on meanings to people that you never, ever could have imagined because everybody feels differently based upon their own life experiences. But that's the wonderful thing about sharing, isn't it? Because you you keep part for yourself and it will always mean that to you. But then you give part of yourself away when you share your stories. And now somebody else has a little bit of you and vice versa. That's magic. It truly is. That is that is magic. Hey, I'm. Molly, where can we go to find out more about Witch Hazel and also to find out more about all the different books that you've created? Oh, well, thank you for asking. You can go to my website. It is idle, I-D-L-E, like my last name, illustration. Dot com. So idleillustration.com and it has things about me and my books that are out already and upcoming projects and links to my social media sites as well. And and those other books have all the colors in the rainbow. <laughs> yes, and, and 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 some new ones too. Oh, good. <laughs> We've had a really fun time speaking about a beautiful picture book. It's called Witch Hazel, and our guest has been the author and illustrator Molly Idol. Molly, thanks so much for spending time with us tonight. Jed, thank you. I'm so proud and and pleased that we are now part of each other's stories. Amen. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Amanda Siebert. She'll be here to celebrate Mama Sing My Song. It's a beautiful picture book. It's also a great service where she will actually compose and record a unique song for your kids based on your kids and not just a a cookie cutter song where they just paste in your kid's name. It's a really wonderful service and it's a really fascinating conversation you don't want to miss. Hey, if you are the author of the fantastic children's book, please do be sure to visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. We would love to have you as a guest here in the podcast. Being a guest, it's fun, it's easy, it doesn't cost a thing, and it gives you the chance in a long-form conversation to tell thousands and thousands of people about your fantastic children's book. Learn how to do that by going to our website, readingwithyourkids.com, and clicking on the Authors Click Here button at the top of the page. You can also find out about a certified great read program and also learn how you can take part in our monthly promotion program. We can celebrate your book uh, by co- through commercials on the podcast, 
do messages to our 100,000 plus social media followers, uh, have your book displayed on a nationwide network of digital pedestrian billboards, and have your book with us physically at whatever live event we are going to be at in any given month. And uh, the month of September, we were at the PTO Today Expo in St. Louis, Missouri, meeting with thousands of educators throughout the Midwest, and in October, we'll be at the Orange County Children's Book Festival um, in Costa Mesa, California. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, I want to start by thanking our guest, Molly Idol. Please be sure to check out Witch Hazel. Also want to thank my team, Fatima Khan, Rory Grady, Mirabella Q. I want to thank my son, Christopher, for hosting me here in his beautiful Orlando studio. I want to thank Daisy for keeping me safe here in the studio. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast.